Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, Inviting Joy into Your Life. My name is Lucy Gerland. I'm a caregiver specialist with the Fairfax Area Agency on Aging. You should have received an email this morning with the speaker's slides, so you will have them for reference in the future. It is not necessary for you to have those open during the presentation. You can ask a question at any time by typing it into the question box on your panel. Today's presentation is being recorded and the recording will be sent to all registrants within a week. There will be a brief survey as you sign out. Please help us by giving us your thoughts. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Miriam Ovisi. Miriam has been in the yoga world for over 20 years and believes that yoga has the ability to meet each person exactly where they are. Yoga is designed to alleviate suffering and support the journey toward peace and well being. She is passionate and adept in her application of the tools of yoga to support a broad range of imbalances. Her style blends yoga philosophy therapeutic and trauma-informed application of breath work, movement, and meditation. She is honored to be the founder and director of Beloved Yoga, a sanctuary for all, and will publish her second book on June 21st, 2020, Care of the Whole Self, Yoga-Inspired Practices to Befriend the Self. So I am going to turn it over to Miriam and, um, I think you will all, I know you will all enjoy this because I have personally had the privilege and opportunity to practice with Miriam. So Miriam, there you Thank go. you so much. Thank you so much, Lucy. And thank you to the team of Fairfax County and just uh, love that you're all doing this initiative and that I get to be a part of it. And I, th I think I'm the closing uh, pre presenter. So thank you for that as well. So welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, today I'm really looking forward to sharing with you some of my wisdom and inspiring you to note that it's very accessible and easy to invite joy into your life. And one of the reasons that this is very important and helpful is based on the ability to then be more responsive to life and not reactive. And what I encourage you today is open the mind, receive the information that may be something brand new that you're maybe hearing today. We're gonna, I'm gonna present, I'm gonna offer a practice, and then there'll be Q&A space. There is a chat box, which I believe you are welcome to put questions into, and feel free to use that, and uh, one of us will review them in that Q&A segment, so we welcome you. So let's dive in into learning and being inspired of how to invite joy into your life. So I am going to move to you can all see the screen so let's just start with the word joy and joy's definition is the emotion evoked by well-being success or good fortune or by the prospect of possessing what one desires in yoga, this word ananda is very important. And it's been used for over 5,000 years in the philosophical text that speaks to yoga. Ananda translates in many ways, some say bliss, I use the word joy. And it's this perspective that we don't need to reach outside of ourselves to get joy. It's a part of our nature. And sometimes it is helpful to learn tools of how to remove the clutter and the obstacles that are in the way 
of us having access to our ananda and our joy. And if maybe this is your first time learning about yoga, the premise of yoga, if, if it was to have a theory, the theory is that gain some tools to support yourself to remove obstacles so that you can alleviate suffering and be in the presence of joy and peace in your life. So that's a little intro to, to kind of what is yoga. And in yoga, we use many tools, predominantly breath work, movement, and contemplative practices, meditation, concentration, sensory exploration. Those are the main tools. Now, in the 1990s, there was a phenomenal discovery that happened and the third bullet you'll see is about anandamide. This is a aspect of ourselves and it's part of our endocannabinoid system. We have basically our own version of THC and cannabis within us. And when they discovered this very specific neurotransmitter, it transformed how we looked at our well being and our sense of joy and happiness and vitality. And what I appreciated it was that the scientists that discovered and kind of um, named this neurotransmitter went back to Sanskrit. I think it was in Israel that it was codified, this particular neurotransmitter, and they picked the word of Sanskrit, Ananda, to name the neurotransmitter that. I think that's kind of cool. And um, I want to just give you like a little bit more about it because it's just so fascinating. When they talk about, so one of the ways to increase our anandamide, our neurotransmitter of joy, to invite joy into our life from a, a perspective of um, biochemistry is to exercise. And so if you've heard about like this after 30 minutes of running or exercise, you tend to get like a little, like they call it a runner's high. They often were attributing it to endorphins, but what they discovered was that no, this has nothing to do with endorphins. This is actually to do with what's being stimulated in us chemically is the anandamide neurotransmitter that it's being activated. Another way is chocolate. It's one of the main food gives us some of this um, stimulus as well. And dark chocolate is a, a powerful way of also um, including things in our diet. And there's always, right? There's always a point where the chocolate can be medicinal and it can also be too much. Um, but I, I thought that was a really great learning for us all to have about some of the, the medicinal quality of chocolate. There's also um, this neurotransmitter, this chemistry of you that invites the sensation of joy is also a what is called a homeostatic regulator. And this is super important. And it doesn't mean you have to understand what that word means, homeostatic regulator. I'm going to translate it, your balance system. It's a it's a neurotransmitter that balances you. And it happens, this is another key thing. It regulates inflammation. So if you're not interested in inviting joy or if this, does, if this doesn't feel good, maybe you wanna reduce inflammation. And these types of practices, you can think of them as a way of reducing inflammation to make room for the experience of peace or joy that you want to have in your life. I can speak a lot more about it, but I'm going to control myself <laughs> and pull back a little bit. But if you have any questions about it at the end, please put it into the chat. Um, I have always found in life that the macro and the micro reflect each other. And so this experience of joy is also a chemical, we call it a bio-spiritual, eco-chemical system that we have 
And so it's, I think it's beautiful to know the wisdom that is within ourselves. Thank you. So I'm gonna dive right into why we're gonna do certain parts of the practice. What does this have to do with inviting joy into our life? So I'm sorry, I'm in a place that has a controlled, uh, without movement, the lights go off, but I'll turn it back on. Um, think of joy, like think of, just for a moment, think of is joy easy to experience when everything is very dense and closed down, or is it ex easier to experience when there is more space? So the opening of the lungs, moving of the arms and spine supports the circulation of energy. Movement is very big for this invitation and to make space for the experience of joy. And you can just take a moment, if you want, with yourself and just kind of curl down. Notice what that ends up doing to your breath. Do you have more or less breath? Notice what it tends to, to kind of do to your overall energy system. And if you stay in here long enough, body posture can absolutely lend itself to depression. And so you want to also make space to open up. So now open up, notice that you have more room to breathe. Notice that maybe you can, just by your senses being able to see more, there's a circulation of energy that is very critical and important. Joy is a radiating force and we need to give it space in our body to radiate and shine out. We don't need to speak about it so much, but make room in our bodies to feel and radiate it. And so the practice that we're gonna do after this presentation will be a chair yoga sequence to make it accessible and it will blend uh, all the tools that we're gonna go over right now. Okay. So the, the next, stimulator of the anandamide neurotransmitter, transmitter of joy, is the breath. And there's been some pretty interesting studies done with yoga and breathing and increasing the flow of this neurotransmitter in ourselves and the sensation of joy. And neuroscientists state that every emotion is related to a breathing pattern. Sometimes we can we, what we know and understand through thousands of years is that when we're angry, the, breath, the breath pattern tends to be more to the front tips of our nostril. It tends to be just um, more, and if you try to breathe that way, you have to be more forceful. When we tend to be more peaceful, quiet, it, can, it goes back and in the back edge of the nostril. We want to always be in the middle. So we're trying to find this middle place for this joy. What was found to stimulate the sensation was to do a little bit of stimulating breath and then some calm, relaxed breath. So I'm going to teach a breath today that's called breath of joy. It was really developed by a woman. Her name is Lily from Kripalu. And it went on, if anyone knows Amy Weintraub, she's a, what I call one of the living legends of the yoga community. And she took that breath, added on to it some mantra work. And today I'll share some of that just with the sound of the ha sound of the breath. And then there's been fascinating studies done about how this does in uh, these, there's a few clinical studies those are peer reviewed, but more case studies and group exploration of how it increases a person's mood. And so we're gonna do, and it's called Breath of Joy. And if you look it up, you'll find so many uh, videos on it, um, but we will explore it today. And if you didn't know, this will be recorded as Lucy, Lucy had said. And so you can always refer to it when you wanna practice this breath, but it's simple enough that if we practice it, you will know it and it's, it'll be a little tool in your toolkit for inviting joy into your life. So now let's move to 
the medicine of the smile. Feel good neurotransmitters of dopamine, endorphins, and serotonin can be released when a smile flashes across your face. This not only relaxes your body and reduces pain, but it can also lower your heart rate and blood pressure. So this ability to lessen the sensation of pain is very much regulated by the anandamide neurotransmitter in your body. And smiling, I should have added to this anandamide neurotransmitter, but smiling activates very specific muscles of the face, especially around the lips. And this has been shown, it's called the zygomat. It's been shown that when this muscle gets triggered, it gives a signal to the brain that then signals your pituitary, that then signals the release of specific neurotransmitters to feel good. I don't think that you need to understand that at all. Take away from what I just shared, how amazing our body is that with little activations, we can welcome and invite joy, peace, this sense of well-being with a little smile. It doesn't have to be big, but I always say do this little test where you smile, the so smile really big, no one can see anyone here, so enjoy that, the smile, and then try to frown. It, it's notice that it's almost like these muscles are very hard for them to work together. So you end up kind of doing something that almost will make you laugh, which is also very helpful. Uh, but it's, I think that's fascinating that some of the muscles of the face don't even fire up off together. They actually shut each other down. And we're going to do a little smiling meditation and smile on the face, but it's also the smile in the body. Think of the collarbone smiling. And it's also, if you can imagine of your seven trillion cells of your body, that maybe you just pick five of those cells and you just imagine them as those little emoji smiley faces. And you just charge up some of those cells really helpful if you're dealing with pain in specific areas of your body take your mind there breathe and visualize those cells smiling reducing the inflammation that may be causing the pain and inviting more of a feel-good sensation in the body so i would love to get into the practice um, you have this presentation. There are, uh, I'm going to share resources, but I, I think smiling is one of the most incredible gifts we have as a human being to do every day with whoever you interact with. One smile can just shift someone. I remember one day I was walking um, on the street and I was thinking pretty heavy thoughts and an older gentleman was just walking by and he was saying, why are you frowning? Smile. And he had this really gorgeous smile on his face. And I just started and I smiled and I was like, wow. For someone to have to say that to me, I was like, I must have been in that place where the energy was being felt. Let me smile. Sometimes we can't smile. I want to always acknowledge that we do need to experience all the emotions. But even in me acknowledging my own anger, there's a sense of awareness. And I smile to that. I smile that I am aware of my own anger and my own sadness or my own disgust or whatever the sensation is. I have the ability to be aware of it. And therefore, I have the ability to shift it. So may this empower you today. Uh, to realize how much power you do have to invite joy into your life. And in the slides are some resources where you can 
access classes online or in studio. And then on my own website, I have um, videos as well that are free that you can access as well to have tools. Okay, so now we are going to move into practice mode. Yes, you can all see me. We're good. Okay. And I'm doing a chair routine. So please grab your comfortable chair. And usually in the chairs, what we encourage is that you don't, you want to not sit all the way back, you know, sit a little bit forward. If you really need the support, make sure you're not sitting in a way that you're collapsed in the lumbar, sit in a way that there's a little lift. And sometimes it can be really helpful to have a little pillow. So we're going to start with breath of joy and then go into some spinal movement and moving in the upper body and the chest and the arms. And this breath does it all. So it's three inhales, one long exhale, and I'm gonna leave it up to you if you wanna do the exhale uh, through the mouth with a sound. If you wanna be more active, you can go ha. That's up to you. I'm gonna do it a little quieter. And what um, I'm gonna invite, you'll see this done many different ways. Crossing the midline is very helpful for toning your nervous system. So it goes like this. It's an inhale, 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 and you swing the arms, okay? We're gonna go at a slow pace. We'll do about 10 rounds, and then we will take a moment before we get into the movement. So join me, inhale, 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 And you don't have to do the movements as big. They can be smaller. And maybe smile. See if you can add a smile. Make it as big or as small as you want. Three more. Last one. And then slowly your arms come down and rest. And breathe. There may be a little bit of activation. Don't try to force the breath to change in any way. Just let the rhythm naturally slow down. Feel your feet onto the ground. Yeah, and usually it's nice to have your feet flat. If you have your shoes on, no worries. Feel your feet and your soles of the feet on the earth. Very nice. Breathing is critical for life. And the respiratory system is mainly maintained in this part, as far as the physical organs. You have your nose, sinus, the trachea. You have your lungs that go right to the lower ribs. And depending on lifestyle, posture, habits, we may not be fully utilizing the lungs. And so we're gonna do a movement that opens the sides of the lungs. So the first one will be a lateral move. And you'll keep your right hand down. You can also hold the right side of the chair and start to lift the left arm up. And these are all optional. Remember, you can always keep your left hand down as we laterally bend. And on your exhale, start to lean to the right side. 
If you want, maybe with the right hand, place it on the left ribs. Good. And let's go ahead and maybe wrap the left arm around the back. And feel this little side bend. Now as you inhale, feel the left side of the lungs expanding. As you exhale, feel the left side of the lungs hugging in. And then slowly come up and release. Left hand on the left leg, right arm rises. As you exhale, side bend. You can always hold the side of the chair, giving you options. You can also take the left hand to hold the side ribs so you can feel breath. You can feel the inhale expanding the right side of the lungs. Exhale, relaxing. If you want, wrap the right arm around the back. Keep the lateral bend, and you'll actually feel some muscular engagement that can be very helpful, keeping posture and strengthening the muscles. But notice the right side of the lungs as you inhale, opening, exhale. Yeah, one more. Very nice, and then we come back to center. Have your feet a little bit wide. As you exhale, take a little fold. Remember, elbows can come to thighs or let your hands come down to the ground. Maybe let your head relax for a moment. And take a few breaths. If you can breathe through the nose, it's best. Mouth breathing has been proven to just increase anxiety. And so if you're a mouth breather, there are ways to work on being a nostril breather. And sometimes we do need to have it checked out. So try to breathe through the nose. And then we slowly come up. Nice. Then you're, I'm just going to turn to the side so you can see me. Now you come to the seat and maybe be a little forward. I want you to be able to experience flexion. It's like you're opening the back side of your lungs and extension, opening the front side of the lungs. So as you exhale, let the air come out, hug and round the back like a tortoise. And then inhale, look up a little bit, lift up the entire rib cage and move back and forth. Your rhythm is your own. I just encourage you to not be so hurried. Exhale to natural pause. Inhale to natural pause. Very nice. One more opening. And this one can be really nice to maybe hold the back of the chair or the seat of the chair so you have something to resist against. And then draw the shoulder blades back, lift up the front of the chest. It's like you're, you're activating the back muscles. And take a few breaths, feeling the front of the body open. And I, I want to do the smiling meditation a little bit at the end, but here, these are great places to notice, am I frowning? Am I clenching? Is there a little smile that I can invite? Can I gaze with a sense of joy at whatever I'm looking at? Even for one second, try it for just one second. And then we exhale and we release. So now, you can see me better. Uh, we're gonna do a final movement of the spine. And we've done the movements of the spine. It's a very powerful way to give the lungs space and the rib cage capacity of movement. And this one, we're gonna do lateral, but you're gonna place your left ankle on your right thigh. If this is very challenging, you can cross, right? Give you the choice. If you're in this configuration, flex the foot. This will protect the knee. And start to inhale and lift up. And as you exhale, just slowly come over and take a few moments. 
This is going to increase some sensation in your left hip joint. It is a what's called a hip release, sometimes called hip openers, that you're just releasing maybe the tightness that's in that outer hip. If there's arthritis, super helpful. If you tend um, to put more weight on one hip when you sit and when you stand, this can be very like a relieving a counter to that. Nice. And then you'll come up and you are all gonna cross the legs now. So my left leg's on top and I'm gonna twist to the left side. So the right hand can rest on the left leg. You can take the left hand behind you, maybe rest it on the back of the chair. Stay looking forward towards me for a moment. And as you exhale, look to the left and consider a little smile. You don't have to look back. Just look to the left, feel the left side of the chest opening, feel the left collarbone smiling across the chest. Don't focus on having to breathe so deeply. Think of breathing smoothly. Sometimes our breath being so deep can be more aggravating than helpful. You might find you get lightheaded with the breath, so be kind in using your breath and slowly come back to the center and we uncross. So now we'll place the right ankle on the left thigh, flexion, protecting knee. Remember your option is also to do this version, but this is gonna get a little more into the hip, okay? And you slowly come forward, slowly. You want your foot to kind of be off the leg. Each hip is different. This is my, my dominant leg and it just feels, I feel it so much more in this leg, so I go slow. Some of you might be able to touch the ground. You're welcome to do that. Um, I don't think going to our edges is always what's necessary. Going to a place where you're having an experience and you're feeling safe and you can maintain the rhythm of the breath may be more helpful than pushing the edge, okay? So find that space for yourself, notice the sensation, take a nice exhale, try to breathe through the nose. And you are allowing a little rounding of the back, your elbows are supporting you, so you're not dumping the load in the lumbar. That's why this, these tend to be safer for a little rounding and a release of the head and neck. Excellent, we come up, we cross. We place our left hand on the right leg. The right hand can go on the back of the chair and we slowly turn to the right side. Remember, you don't have to look back. You might just stay looking forward and then Gently feel the right side of the collarbone smiling open, this gentle opening, the right side of the chest, gazing to the right, smile in the gaze, feeling breath naturally moving in and out. Just stay with me a couple more breaths. Do the best that you can, but focus on the gaze being full of joy, a nice smooth breath, excellent. And then we come back to center. Come back to seated. And now you can kind of sit a little comfortably. If you'd like, you can sit back. You're welcome to be on the ground, um, but I do want the spine lifted up. So I'm gonna let you decide what is best for you. If you sense you wanna take a fold, take a little fold before. Another way, if, you, if folding forward doesn't feel so good, you can bring a knee up and bow to it. Sometimes the lower back talks to you. Don't ignore it. Good. Okay, so now we'll move into our smiling meditation. And before we go into it, we're gonna do three breaths of joy. Number three, inhale. One, exhale. And we're gonna work on smiling while we do this with the inhale. Okay, 
So join me for three. Okay, it's going to be inhale. Nice, and then relax the hands down. If you tend to let your chin come forward, take a moment with one hand to the back of the head, press the head back, and sense that the back of your head is aligned with the upper back, and draw the chin down a little bit. See my jawline? You see how it goes right into the ears? I want you to explore the sensation that your jaw is smiling and the tops of the ears are smiling. So it's this lift up. So it helps to drop the chin down just a little bit. And then exhale. I encourage you to have your eyes open unless you prefer to close your eyes, please do. This is your choice. If your eyes are open, look at something that you can that you're not having conversations about and you can be a little bit neutral about. So I have a cup that I'm looking at and I can just gaze at that cup and not, I don't have too many stories around it. So you, something more neutral or natural, maybe a plant, a leaf, it can even be a spoon or a fork or a cup is great. And you start to let your eyes settle on whatever you're looking at. If your eyes are closed, just let your sense of self settle. And let's invite an exploration of the jaw and relax the jaw. If the lips are really pressed together firmly, just a little softening of the lips. Move your awareness down and feel that the front of the chest is just gently open. Like you can receive another maybe second of inhale so you feel more open and receptive. And whatever you're gazing at, whether your eyes are closed, invite a sense of gratitude for just that very object. And if your eyes are closed, just saying thank you for the moment, just for the moment that you're able to be aware right now just right now. And then to close the eyes if it's comfortable or bring your gaze closer to yourself. And feel the smallest lift of the edges of the lips. Right? We're not, we can't see each other on these platforms. So this is your chance to just explore. Little edges of the lips lifted only so that you can experience it. And then maybe a little more, a touch more. You don't want to be too much because you'll fit your face will tire. <laughs> so just a little bit more. And we're going to sit in this for one minute. I'll talk about why we're doing it. It's going to be two minutes when we're complete with it, but why we're doing it longer. It's a very, it's a very specific reason why we do it that long. But just try for one minute and a half right now to just have that little smile. Maybe notice how quickly the smile goes away or how it can sustain. Maybe notice what's going on just internally and try not to judge it, but come back to the smile.
And if you could place a smile in any part of your body, maybe there's a part of your body that has a little discomfort, take your attention there and explore the idea of placing a smile there, of breathing in space to that region. You have a couple more breaths. Let's do three more smiling breaths. Maybe if you've been a little shy with the smile, make it a little more active and pronounced. And then slowly come back, open the eyes and bring yourself to the present moment. Begin to roll the shoulders around. Move the spine and take a fold of your choice. So you might want, if you're in your chair, just fold forward. If you're on the ground, walk your hands out and just take a little moment to digest that experience. Maybe reflect on one thing, one very specific thing that you are taking away today that you feel this is useful for me. Good. And then when you're ready, let's come up and take a moment to connect. In the yoga tradition, we, we end with a namaste, namaha, just acknowledging each other. Thank you so much for taking time to be open to what I shared and to the practice. Now I welcome your questions and I'd love to hear your takeaways what resonated, what was helpful, what surprised you. Hey, Lucy. Hi. All right, well, it takes a moment to come back from something so peaceful and wonderful as that. Thank you so much. You're so, so welcome. I know um, as people come back to the real world, um, I'll invite you to put your questions in the questions panel. We have a few minutes for questions. Oh. I'm just plugging in my computer. <laughs> okay. So I do have a couple of questions and a Perfect. lot of thank yous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, well, let's start with this one. While doing the exercises, I felt tension in my neck. Could you show us a demo on stretching the neck? Sure. So my go-to with neck is massage, is to first, before you do anything, like let your head bow forward and massage the base of the neck and you kind of run down and massage. I, the neck mimics the lower back. So it's really helpful to look at postural. So one is massage, but if you want to stretch the neck, Please don't ever do these full neck rolls, number one, if, but the half neck rolls can be very helpful. So you can let your head bow forward and lean your left ear to the left shoulder. And maybe you run the right hand down the right side of the neck. And you might feel some tension there, but you can smooth it out, even squeeze it. And this is a really nice stretch. Your head bows forward, right ear to the right shoulder. Your left hand can slide down the left side of the neck. These uh, fibers really respond to touch and massage. 
and and creating some distance between points. Yeah. And bow forward and come back up. Oh, I that was helpful. Hey. <laughs> Those are helpful. Yes. And um, what is the best time of day to do these? So you can do this. So often I think about there's three critical times of day to take particular to take pauses. There's the morning, there's the afternoon, and there's the evening. But you want to do them before meal time. Breath of fire can be more activating. So I would say that breath, great for morning, afternoon. But if you've had a lot of tension and it's like five, six o'clock, it can be really nice for release around that time. But it's not a breath you do right before you go to bed. The practice is accessible at any point. And the meditation. All right. Um, I experimented, I'm reading here, and did the mm -hmm. breath of joy standing up, loving it, which I'm telling you, we, I'm getting all kinds of comments. Great, thank you, um, mm -hmm. marvelous. Um, anyway, back to the breath of joy. <laughs> standing up, loving it, felt energy throughout my body. Anything I should be concerned about doing it standing up with bigger movement? No, I think it's actually, it can, if you can stand up, it is much more energizing. When you, I'm always wary because some of you are going to go Google this. <laughs> so mm -hmm. when you see it online, you're going to see a lot of them are going to have you fold forward and like drop forward into a ragdoll fold. And that's mm -hmm. my only caution um, to not do that and let it be just a slight inclination versus a full drop unless you know your body and you know that that is, can be helpful for you. Okay, thank you. Are these exercises safe for someone who has arthritis? Yes, they're very safe and very helpful. Arthritis is a drying out process of joints, which creates discomfort and movement of joints is what helps bring the synovial fluid back to lubricate them. So movement is really helpful for arthritis. And definitely got the breath flowing through the body. Yeah. Oh, yes. so, yeah. Um, I'm not flexible. What style of yoga is best for me? That was a so question. That's a big question. So find a, first it's about finding a place you are comfortable with and safe. And that if you're new to yoga, that it's a beginner's that they have a beginner space uh, for you to explore movement, breath, and how to bring your mind into presence. So always look um, for a, a trained teacher that has experience also working with beginners and for, with different bodies. Mm -hmm. But you're always welcome to reach out uh, to my email if you're in a specific area. I know so many studios. I'm happy to recommend a studio if I know where you're at. Did you put your email in the um, presentation? Is it I in did. there? Yes, okay. on the first page, I think. Because uh, I had another question uh, from the participants. What is your website? So the studio that I run is belovedyoga.com. And my personal is mariamobc.com. And it's on the first page of the presentation. Okay, and that presentation was sent out this morning. A recording of the webinar will also be sent out, but if you uh, did not get the email this morning, you can reach out to us at the same place that you registered uh, for this. Okay, all right, let me see if there are any other, the raves are coming in. <laughs> a smiling meditation, was that interesting? You enjoyed oh. that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So since so, you mentioned um, the um, breath um, standing up, um, can you just show that real gen generally? Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, absolutely. So in the standing, 
it would be an inhale, inhale, inhale. But what you'll see a lot recommended is in. And that I just, you gotta know your body. Don't just do that if it's your first time doing it, but maybe be a little bit like bend the knees and sit back if you're going to do that. That's 101 of folding forward. Okay. Yeah. Good All question. Right. So um, at the, yeah, just at the end of the presentation, I talked about why we're holding for, we held for about two minutes of smiling. So the body works in, the neurotransmitter works in a 90 second cycle. It, it's basically a loop, it's called a neurological loop. And so whenever we want to kind of get something medicinal from what we're doing, it's important to be with it for at least a minute and a half. And so if you just like, if I just go like that, it's, I'm not going to feel anything. So it's like stay in things a little bit, especially the smiling one, because it takes a little bit, get this up, get the brain to receive it, get the neurotransmitters to release, give yourself a chance to experience the cascade of the sensation. And a minute is actually a lot longer than you think. So is it best to like set a timer to make sure or how do you, you know? Yeah, I'm not, I think everyone's unique and I think timers can be helpful. So you're not, you're not, you don't keep opening your eyes to check with it. I think it can be really helpful. And if you're wanting to do like a little meditation every day, I encourage start with the two to three minutes. It can feel mm -hmm. like a long time, but it's a good, it's a really good place to begin and cultivate that. Right. So I have an, I got another question. Um, could you show us an exercise to stretch the lower back? We tend to sit a lot. How can we release some stress from the lower back? Sure. So that can be more helpful to then, I assume the sitting is on a chair is to probably just get up off the chair, depending on the chair, and use a surface, whether it's the back of the chair or a table, and lengthen out the lower back. You can bend the knees as needed, but lengthen out. You can always bring your hands on the back of the chair. Depending on the chair, you can walk down. Uh, it, I find if you do end up having like a lot of sitting in your life, it's real in a chair or even in sitting on the ground, every hour you want to get up and lengthen your lower back. Another thing, if you've been sitting for a few hours, so good. If you can get on the ground and hug your knees in. And it's it's and you can get on your bed, you can get on your couch. But it's as simple as just kind of laying back, hugging in, maybe circling the knees. It takes a lot to sit up. And so I find that's really helpful. And you can do it on a bed or a couch. But let your, let your back rest. It takes a lot to be <laughs> against gravity all day long. Right. OK. Well. I don't think I have uh, any other questions coming in. Is there any final uh, words you want to say? No, just gratitude and gratitude uh, to you, Lucy. Thank you so much. And so great to see you. And gratitude I know you, you my teacher. <laughs> thank you. Well, we're each other's teacher. I'm so grateful for that. And, and just, yeah, exactly, to reconnect. And just know that you have a lot of power, each one of you, to invite joy, to make space, get in touch with yourself, get educated, and be in awe. You are amazing, and thank you. Grateful for each of you. Thank wow. you. All right, so everybody, as you sign out, you will receive a brief survey, and we do have a webinar next Wednesday on medication management, so please uh, sign up for that. If you have not already, contact us, and once again, Miriam, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will be accessing this recording 
frequently and do all of these things with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Be Thank well, you everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.